What up, y'all? Mike Rips. Here today, I want to drop a book review for y'all. Recently finished this book, Little Boy Blue by Edward Bunker. Now, some of y'all might know and be familiar with Edward Bunker. A lot of you are already familiar with him, but you don't realize it yet. He plays probably the most minor character in this film, which is legendary, Reservoir Dogs. He's Mr. Blue in Le uh, Reservoir Dogs. He's uh, He's got like one line, I think, and he's in it. They, they do a shot of him when Lawrence Tierney is uh, announcing all them, Joe Cabot, when he's saying Mr. Blue, Mr. Brown, Mr. Pink, the classic scene where Tarantino is Mr. Brown himself. He's like, what is that? It's like Mr. Shit. And Steve Buscemi is like, Mr. Pink, that's like Mr. Pussy, you know? But Edward Bunker was, uh, he was an actual criminal, first of all. Spent a lot of time in jail in California, Southern California all the way, I believe. I don't know if he did any time way up in the maybe, you know, Sacramento area. I don't know the geography of California that well. I only know San Francisco, L.A., and San Diego. Uh, but Little Boy Blue, I don't even know. He has like four novels. This might be his third or fourth, I believe. His first one is No Beast So Fierce. I know he wrote this one while locked up. I believe he wrote at least some of this or a lot of this while he was locked up. But, you know, Edward Bunker is a very interesting character. He wrote screenplays and he wrote novels while he was locked up. And uh, Little Boy Blue is a book uh, that's written in third person, which I don't know if he does that often. And No Beer So Fierce, the character is named Max Dembo. And this is definitely based on uh, Edward Bunker's a little bit of like his adult life. And this is written in first person. This was written in third person, which I was excited about. Something weird about this fucking copy, though. It says, the best first person crime novel I've ever read. Quentin Tarantino on the back here. You guys can see uh, that quote. I don't know if that was probably for No Be So Fierce, but whatever. This bootleg publishing company, St. Martin's Griffin. I don't know if they're a subsidiary of one of the other big ones or whatever. They put this quote on the back. I do know... Uh, Tarantino was highly, highly influenced by his work. This is almost an extension of some of the Tarantino stuff, and I'll get to that in this video in a minute here. But Little Boy Blue was basically about a kid, Alex Hammond. Uh, his mother is estranged. I think she was either crazy or an alcoholic, if I remember right. His father was from the Midwest, Ohio, I believe, and then he moved to California after the Depression. It's from the Dust Bowl. I remember they said that specifically. So I think it was Ohio, if I remember correctly. He uh, goes to California looking for work after the Depression. World War II is beginning, in the beginning of the book. It starts out when Alex is 11, and his father's bringing him to another institution. He's already been to military schools and some other uh, stuff like that. And the dad can't be around because he's looking for work. He's a carpenter that's out of work. So he wants the kid to have some type of discipline or some form of uh, structure, something like that. So he's sending him to these schools. Alex keeps breaking out. Uh, a lot of people think he's crazy. That's a theme in the book that he might be crazy, he might be psychopathic. Or is it the institutions that he's been subjected to that kind of drove him crazy? Some of the themes in this book are pretty relevant today because there's a lot of stuff about criminal justice reform or the criminal justice system and if someone is institutionalized does it cause them to be crazy or does it cause them to commit crimes or be quote-unquote bad you know but it's an interesting book it's really good it's very stark which I believe uh Edward Bunker's autobiography or his memoir is called is titled stark his writing they always say that in a lot of the goodreads reviews they say it's very stark half the fucking goodreads reviews on this one are in different languages by the way but it's got a high rating i think it's got at least a four i would give it a four out of five i really enjoyed it uh majority of the book takes place in the institutions while he's locked up which is cool uh it's like a kids prison uh, movie or novel i don't know if any of y'all are familiar with this uk movie called scum it was that dude ray winstone's first movie and it was banned uh, i think it was a bbc movie originally and it got banned so then they made it as a movie anyway that came out in 1979 this was published in 1981 and there's certainly some 
drastic similarities. I'm not saying Edward Bunker saw scum and copied it. I don't think that happened. I think it's just typical story you would hear from a kid that's going from 11 till I think he gets up to 15 or 16 by the end of the book and uh, lives his life in institutions. Most of it, as I said, takes place in these institutions, so you learn a lot about that in the time period, the late 30s into the early 40s, World War II going on, post-war, all that. Um, the parts where he escapes, he escapes a few times. Spoiler alert, I'm not going to do too many spoilers here. I don't want to spoil much for you, and if I am going to say something, I'll say spoiler alert. You can fast forward or skip the whole fucking rest of the video altogether, but... Because most of it takes place while he's incarcerated, the scenes where he's not and he's uh, out and about, you know, in the streets, maybe doing crimes, doing other stuff, those scenes really were really good and interesting. And it's a nice side of L.A. I've never gotten to live in L.A., but I've been there quite a few times and never got to hang out there as much as I would want to. But this paints the picture of it from what I know of it, or, you know, at least what I imagine that it is, or fantasize it being in my mind. It's, uh, it's an exciting book. The build-up is really good. Um, now, the comparisons with him and his buddy, I know they became friends, hence him being in Reservoir Dogs. He has a, quite a few, not quite a few, but at least two others, I think maybe more screenplays that he wrote of his uh, work that novels that became movies. One is called Animal Factory. I've seen that already. It has uh, Willem Dafoe, Edward Furlong, Tom Arnold. I want to say Danny Trejo is in it too. I watched it like 10 years ago. I'll eventually get to reading the book, but I want the movie to be completely out of my mind before I go back and read the book. Um, but he became friends with Tarantino along the way. I know Tarantino was reading his stuff. He liked it. He enjoyed it. And there are some things in this book. Here's a little bit of a spoiler alert that there's some drastic things that Quentin straight up lifted, and I don't think it's biting or anything like that. I think it's just paying homage, um, or homage, whatever the fuck you say. But one thing was, you know the gimp scene with Peter Green? Uh, Zed, I believe. And I don't know if you guys ever saw Killing Zoe. Here's a side note. His name is Zed, the character that comes from America to France in Killing Zoe. I always presumed that that is supposed to be Zed from Pulp Fiction. Another side note, this guy Alex Hammond is Little Boy Blue in this book, and let's just say his name is Mr. Blue in Reservoir Dogs, so we could kind of flesh out that I think L Mr. Blue is Little Boy Blue Alex Hammond as well, but I digress. The Zed scene where they have the gimp and they have Bruce Willis and Ving Rhames down there, Marcellus Wiley, and uh, Marcellus Wallace, Wiley is the dude from Fox News or Fox Sports, whatever the fuck. And he does the eeny, meeny, miny, mo thing. That is directly in this book and it was published in 1981, which is 23 years before Pulp Fiction. Uh, who knows before Quentin actually wrote it. And he does an emphasis when there's some scenes of people using heroin, shooting dope in the book, where he makes it a point to address the blood going back into the plunger, the needle, the eyedropper, he calls it in the book, the blood mixing with the drugs before the guy shoots it, which if you remember in Pulp Fiction, when Vincent does the heroin shooting scene, he's driving, they show the needle going, I'm, it's not John Travolta's arm, it's probably an extra or whatever, and it's probably water, of course, not dope uh, on a movie set, but who knows. I know they drank in one of the other Tarantino, I think in Death Proof in the beginning. But... The blood rushes into the needle. Quentin makes sure to get that a scene on the, uh, on the, um, you know, whoops. In the movie, you get to see that directly. But regardless, I strongly recommend this book. Like I said, four out of five. And if you're into it, dig deeper into Edward Bunker's bibliography. And you'll see the similarities between some of the Tarantino work and his work. It's very close. Uh, but that's it, y'all. That's it for me today. Cheers. Peace and love.